So you are looking at the onion bed. And I think birds might have snuck off with a couple of them. But nothing's hit it too hard in the last week or so that it's been here. Although something, or the wind, or something's knocking over these guys occasionally. But they are sprouting roots as you see. So I've had to put a couple back in. But they're growing well. Here's, here's one. Growing pretty good. We got a... This guy's doing pretty good. This one, you know, so we're gonna get at least some kind of onion. Unless some other critter comes through here and devours them all. But here's what I really have for today. This is a branch from a fig. I finally got some fig cuttings. I got on this uh, website called Falling Fruit and across the world, I suppose, they people report public fruit trees and stuff that are everywhere and you can go pick fruit off them. and. A lot of homeowners and stuff, or places, places you can knock on the door and ask, you know. Pretty cool website. But I found some public fig trees that were actually very overgrown. So I took a couple cuttings. So I shoved this in there. There's a node right there on the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. That's a little leaf node. That's where another branch would grow. I'm going to stick that in all the way down there until we have this node. So there's two nodes, one underground, one above. And I'm going to cut it just a you know, inch or so below the next node. And I'm going to do the exact same thing in a new location here. Oh, there's another onion that needs some help. It's my fault. I really just didn't get them in. You should probably get them in there almost halfway. About, you know, but I'm going to find another little spot. Slide this guy in. First node is in, and the second node is right there. So then I'm going to go ahead and cut an inch or so below the next one. And uh, do the same thing. Oh, just tore that guy out. He's grown good. Though. Look at that onion. i give him a good hole to go in. Let's see. There we go. That'll be a little bit more secure, I'm sure. Oh, look at this worm. Good to see. I'm gonna stick a, I'm gonna stick one of these right next to him. Now this is a smaller cutting, but that's fine. I'm still just gonna do two nodes because that's all we're gonna need. I believe these are green figs, but we shall see. I think I have black mission and and these green ones. And uh, you know, I don't know if that's the actual color it's gonna be, but there's a little fig starting to pop out. They they come real early. So, I'm actually going to rub that off because I don't want to burden this cutting with it. Same with anything else I see like that. Just rub it off. And actually, rubbing like this, rubbing nodes off, is one of the best, most cleanest, healthiest ways to prune a tree. Because you get there early, it doesn't damage the plant very much. You're just kind of like, you're literally nipping it in the bud. So, that's always cool. This one, I'll stick one right here. These aren't going to be here forever. I'm just going to let them root here and find a new home for them. And this one, I might, I might give that one two nodes because it's just getting short. So I'll cut basically right in between those ones. And uh, we'll call that one. And we'll slide that one in here somewhere too. Let's see, maybe right here. Really don't want budding too early. And uh, we should have five fig trees out of that. Figs are pretty, pretty tough, and they they root really well, and uh, coppice really well, and they're just a hardy. So I'm thinking that um, I'm gonna get quite a few figs. Hopefully, if I'm lucky, I will go find more because there's actually quite a few trees all over Portland. Portland's quite a garden city. I'll give it that. So, and there's just fruit trees all over the streets. Hang, hanging out into the road even, <laughs> getting in the way of cars. Some of these were. Uh, so I'm gonna go find a new home for the rest of these. A little, another little peek at this uh, raspberry of mine. It's ended up some new growth. Um, at least some of this is gonna be new growth. I think some of this might be branching off the original stems, but uh, it's looking like it's coming back and I'm happy that we got a whole stock here. It was just one cane from last year. We'll get a couple berries on that maybe, although I think that frost might have got it a little bit. But uh, they're pretty hardy, so we should be okay.
right here is an old fallow bed that I haven't used since last year. I grew a little bit of a Hubbard squash in here, slightly unsuccessfully because it, uh, oh, what is that? Is that salmonberry? Or is that a raspberry? Unsure. We either got a salmonberry coming back or a raspberry. Probably salmonberry. There was quite a bit of it around here when I came in. But, uh, do a little weeding. It's good to get that out early. Not a lot to do, but if I pull this grass out now, it'll just be that much easier later and it won't creep into the bed. The bed's kind of sunk down and that's actually really helping keep the grass out, believe it or not, because it's like three, four inches lower than the surrounding rhizomaceous grass. So those rhizomes just haven't been able to make their way in quite yet, but they're going to try. So we need to stay vigilant. I left the uh, growth here and it's acted kind of like a mulch and I'm happy about that because uh, you can see this bed's actually quite clean. Not a lot of weeds growing in here. The mulch seemed to have helped with that. Granted it's early spring still but look at that. Nice. This is also a relatively, oh here, my other raspberry is doing okay too. Glad to hear. I I don't know which one that one is. I have so many raspberries. This isn't the thornless, obviously. This is the Joan Jay. Joan Jay thornless. Excellent. Everbearing. Very, they spread good. They are some good. This one is probably a Willamette. I think I salvaged this from Portland. Um, they ripped them out. Uh, there was a house that was remodeled and new people moved in. And the, 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 the uh, workers or somebody ripped it out whole grove of these and uh, a couple little plants started growing and they were going to get rid of them because they were still doing work there they were going to completely annihilate them so I just whisked away the few survivors and grew them for a year in a pot and now they're popping back up we even have a new little shoot coming up and these are last year's stuff so we'll get a couple berries that'll be nice but as you can see we got a bed here that's just pretty much empty with just only a little bit of grass and nonsense in it. So I think this will be a good nursery bed for now. And I'll probably even use it for annuals later or maybe upgrade it to a uh, Hugel bed and put some perennials in there. That remains to be seen. But uh, I'll be doing the same thing that I did a minute ago with these new cuttings. Just, uh, you know, I always wanna make sure that you're actually sitting the bottom end in important. But I think I'm just going to go up the center with these. Throw a couple in. Make sure that you get a node in there. All the way down to the next one. At ground level. Whoa. Like that. And then we're just going to cut about an inch or so below the next node. And uh, try another one right here. You can even have, you know, if the node goes a little bit below the soil, it's fine. Even, because it'll, uh, it'll totally sprout back up. The real thing is that the top node, you want to leave some room up there, because this might die down a little bit. And you don't want it to get all the way down to that node before it starts growing again. But the plants know how to handle that, so... Oh, get out of the way. There we go. And uh, this one I'll just cut here, give it an extra node. It's all about the proportions, really. You want it to be proportioned correctly. <sighs> Something between like a pencil and a sharpie, or if you got smaller things like the rosemary, you might even want to make them smaller. Just so many nodes. Bigger stuff like this, you only need a couple nodes. Sometimes smaller, more herbaceous stuff like rosemary or mint or thyme or something, you can have more nodes. Um, vines, you can sometimes have more nodes, but then, then again, with vines, it's not that necessary because they uh, happen to be quite prolific usually. But uh, yeah, the nodes are where the new growth, much of it will come from. Um, and you wanna make sure you have a couple, just a couple. I'm gonna put a couple more. This is a smaller branch, but we're gonna see how it fares. Anyway, get my cutters. And uh, cut it right there. And slide this one in. So I have another variety I'm going to put in all these beds too, and we'll see that here before the end. But uh, 
I'm spreading these out in a couple different places because I want to make sure I have some success because I really want figs badly because they're like one of my favorite and I've never really been able to uh, get to growing them. So let's move on to the next spot. Here is the original Hugel bed. So as you can see right over there, I have a artichoke that I planted and it's doing really well. It's happy out here. It's a good sign because I do want to have more of those. They're an awesome perennial and I have seeds, but I didn't have luck last year sprouting my artichoke seeds oddly enough because in the past I had really good luck, but I was not able to find homes for them before they grew. So I ended up having to liquidate those, which is never too much fun for a gardener. But I'm just going to place the last of these here. And, uh, you guys catch the drift on that, so you know what I'm doing. But I have a whole nother variety here. Indistinguishable. But I think these are uh, the Black Mission figs. You know, the classic black figs with the red insides. The other ones, I think, are green inside and out, if I remember correctly, because there's a little information. 